I'm Claudia Catania, and you're listening to Playing On Air. You're about to hear an upset by David Auburn, the Pulitzer Prize and Tony Award winning playwright of proof. It's about two tennis champions and features a pair of champion Tony nominees. David Harbour of Netflix Stranger Things and the movie Hellboy, and Stephen Boyer of Broadway's Hand to God and NBC's Trial and Error. They're directed by Broadway, Off-Broadway, and regional theater veteran Michael Wilson. And now, an upset. Player one is a tennis pro, barely 20. Player two is a tennis pro in his late 30s. We see these two players in three scenes. A number of months transpire between each, and all three scenes take place in a locker room on the Grand Slam circuit immediately following a match. Good match. Fuck you! <laughs> I just want to say, it's an honor to be on court with you. Is an honor? Can you fucking speak English? I only learned English last year. I see you are not very happy right now. I leave you alone. Well, thank you very much. It's just fucking qualifiers. Excuse me? You play in your little qualifying tournament. You beat a bunch of granddads and Juniors on Ritalin and country club teaching pros diddling around the circuit for a lark for the groupies. They're amateurs, but congratulations, cheers. You won it. So you come into the main draw all nice and warm, feeling confident, your peckers up. Meanwhile, I come in after a week and a half in New Haven busting my ass against top 10 players, vicious, plus, I'm me. I gotta walk out there on stadium court with everybody praying that I'll lose. Let's see something new. Let's see what the Czech kid can do. I am Romanian. Romania. Oh, you actually have tennis courts there? Christ, the crowd, they're bored. They are so bored. They're jaded. They'd root for anything as long as it was different. They're like Romans in the Colosseum. They'd root for a giraffe against me or a pair of dwarves. Of course they get on your side. You're the underdog. This crowd in New York sure loves an underdog. I watched the tape tonight. I give you a nickel. Every time the TV guys say that, you'd walk away with 95 bucks. Of course the first bad call, they're on your side. The ball was in. It was not in! It was out by a country mile. You couldn't have possibly seen it. You were sprawled on your ass 25 feet away. I was standing right next to it. it. It was called in. I'm sorry you do not like it. Yeah, you're goddamn right. I do not like it. A bad call at break point in the third, and you are fucked. You're fucked. Excuse me. You are not fucked. Excuse me. I had still to win three sets. Have you ever heard of momentum? Hmm? It is all about momentum. I go down a break in the third, crowd goes all giddy because they think they're seeing something. An upset, an upset in the making. And suddenly they're screaming your name. Every time you knock in a bloopy forehand, a passing shot I could make in my sleep when I was 15 brings down the house. Guys in the stands, hardcore fans who think they're seeing something new, being mavericks because they spin on a dime and start worshiping a new face. God, now I can see the two-faced fuckers with their white shorts and their visors. Why the fuck do tennis fans wear fucking tennis clothes when they go watch a fucking tennis match? You don't see Giants fans at the fucking Meadowlands in shoulder pads for fucks. I just know those assholes are calling their asshole friends. They're saying, yeah, man. Man, I'm in the stadium. Where are you? The food court? Hey, you gotta come over. Yeah, put down your $16 roasted vegetable and hummus wrap and come see this. I am watching an upset. All because you make a little diving volley at the net on break point that goes out, but everyone is too dazzled by the Romanian 
no name qualifier doing his flouncy little gymnastics routine on a shot that you could have made vertically like a normal man if you moved your silly fucking feet. And there goes the set. And the next two sets. And the match goes down the fucking toilet. I suppose you did not lose them. Oh, I lost them, all right. Don't think I can't stomach it. I've lost matches before. I even lost matches on cocksucking calls before. The thing is, what I've never done is lost a first round match in a major on a cocksucking call to a 19-year-old Romanian qualifier ranked 164 in the world with a back end like a post-menopausal mom playing <laughs> Sunday doubles in the park with the girls from the book group. You know my ranking. <laughs> what? I did not think a man like you would know my ranking or my age. <laughs> Oh, don't get all misty, all right? I do my homework. What do you think? My back end is not strong. I realize this. You're not turning your shoulder. I am working on this. You ought to be looking over your shoulder at the ball. This is what my coach says. You should listen to him. I do, but he's in Romania. <laughs> your coach didn't come to see your big U.S. upset because he's in Romania? Yes, he is very sick. Oh, that's a real heartbreaker. Congratulations. Press gonna gobble that up. I think he will die soon. You play him once. I did? Oh, yes, great match. Remind me. The 1994 Australian Open, the fourth round. Fourth round, 94 Australia? Hmm? Not the bow-legged lefty with the metal racket. He used metal racket. That was freakish. The last guy on tour playing with metal. This hilarious aluminum Eastern Bloc piece of crap. It was, yeah, yeah. Yes, metal. And I got a cock-sucking call then. You miserable Romanians. He was up a break in the fourth when I doubled at 30-40 on a foot fault. They call a foot fault randomly once in a tournament just to show that they remember the fucking rules and I got it. So this rubber-legged Romanian metal-wielding freak ranked 75 in the world took a second set off me. He often talks of it. I won the fifth though, seven to five. He talks of it as the great match of his life. He has picture of you and he together at Nat shaking hands after the match. He keeps it above the, uh, how you say, the fireplace. The mantelpiece? The mantelpiece. In the main room, the living room of his apartment. You could say fireplace. It's the same thing. The racket from the match is there too. He never used it again. It's up on the wall next to the picture in a frame. Well, that's where it belongs. <laughs> so what's he got? Cancer. Too bad. I should call him now. Hey. Tell him fuck you from me. Uh, very nice. <laughs> Thank you. I watched the last set from the stand. I saw you. What is that now? It's 23 straight. Huh? 24? Oh, no, 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 no. Nothing like that. 21. <laughs> Get so you can't remember losing. I remember a little bit. Mm -hmm. Stuff's feeling like it can happen to oh, you. It can always happen to you. Is it going to happen to you tomorrow? I don't believe so, no. You see, that's when you have to be careful. <laughs> the man tomorrow's unseated. Oh, you know, you were unseated a few tournaments ago. Now look at you. A few tournaments from now, he will be still. You can see it in his shoulders. You managed to tart up your backhand a little bit. Yes, he's much better. Thank you for the advice. Oh, don't give me any credit for it, please. It's no longer an embarrassment. Now it's just merely pitiable. Feels much better. Like everything. Uh, here. What? Sign it. The tennis ball. You're joking. No. I would like an autograph, please. 
I do not understand this joke. It's not a joke, sadly. It is for my sister's kid. He made me promise. Evidently, he's a fan. You did not tell him to fuck off? He's 11. <laughs> the way you say all the time to everybody, fuck off, fuck you, fucking fuck. I'm not saying it wasn't the initial impulse. And I took a deep breath, I choked down my pride in the name of benevolent unclehood and for the good of the game. Do you need a pen? No. What is his name? Nate. Nate. Here you go. Thank you. Never want to disappoint a fan. a boy. You getting a lot of new fans? Yes. How are the girls treating you? I have a girlfriend. Oh. She on tour with you? No. Ah, she's back in the old country. In Bucharest, yes. She's studying. A scholar. Sports medicine. Ah. It's a very demanding course. Sure, sure. She, she works very hard. Couldn't cut it as a player. Figured she could stay close to you taping your knee, giving you a back rub. We haven't decided if she'll tour with me. Is she a pretty girl? I think she's very pretty, yes. Good. So how many of you fucked on tour? I mean, yours is in Romania. You can't tell me you haven't made a few selections from the buffet outside the players' lounge. <laughs> Come on, I can see it in the shoulders. You're wrong. Come off it. Come on, there's too many of them. The lovely, spoiled little slags from all across the globe. You double up yet? I'm sorry? Two at once, or three. You better do it while you can. It gets much harder after you fall out of the top 50. Come on, you can tell me. Yes, I do this. Ah, a boy! <laughs> and? I'm afraid I disappoint them. Oh, no, they don't care. Get that straight in your mind. You'll be okay. They don't care about you. Once this girl knocked on my hotel room door, I was getting ready to go to the airport, and she says, can I come in? I was number three in the world. I said, uh, I got to leave in 15 minutes. She says, are you ready? She says, that's okay. I only need 10. They don't care. It's a notch in their belt, or today an entry in their, what is it, feed or whatever. You can, you can have fun with it. Once uh, at a party, this girl comes right up to me, no preliminaries, no name, nothing. Says, comes right into the bathroom, says, I want to suck your cock. What did you do? I said, what's in it for me? <laughs> <laughs> what did she say? She loved it. She laughed. <laughs> then she sucked your cock. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you, know, you didn't disappoint them. Maybe you were disappointed. Were you disappointed? A little. Yeah, I felt the same way. I mean, I'd rather be inadequate with one woman at a time. I was not inadequate. Oh, no, 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 no. But it's nicer with your girlfriend. Yes. That's sweet. You'll try it again, though. Yes. Yeah, that's a spirit. Keep trying. Keep trying, keep trying. I am an athlete. Can I ask you something? Something personal? Sure. Who is your art dealer? Uh, I don't have just one. There are a couple of people I've worked with over. Why? I'm thinking of buying a painting. Yeah? What? I don't know yet, but I, I like always this idea of buying art, and now one day I know I'll buy a house and I will need art to put on the walls. One day? Well, buy, buy a house now, the, mm. the year you're having? I'm not ready yet. I, I don't know where it should be. Florida, Spain, Monte Carlo for the Texas. Bucharest? Not Bucharest. Have you been to Bucharest? In and out. Yeah, this is the way to go. <laughs> <clears throat> so I read how you are famous for your art collection. You know all the artists. Who's good? What sort of stuff do you like? I don't know. I don't know anything about what makes a good artist, a good painting. A good painting is a painting that you enjoy looking at. Well, I don't know what I enjoy. Well, then you're not ready to buy. I wanted to buy a painting with the money I win from this tournament. Whoa, 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 whoa. Take it easy. You're not over the finish line yet. I will be. Look, forget about dealers. Take some time. Go to museums. Go to galleries. Whenever you're in the new city, take an afternoon. Buy yourself a little notebook. Write down the names of what you like. Read some books. Educate yourself a little bit. Then we can start talking dealers, okay? Okay. I just like the idea. I respect that you have this hobby, that you have knowledge of an area outside the game, that you... You're the fucking hobby right now, okay? All right, just Jesus, you ignorant little hayseed. You need to win. Yes, you're right. 
I'm sorry you were eliminated. Guy slapped me around like a bitch, ran my legs right off. I had to call for a trainer in the fourth set just to catch my breath. I'm lucky there was a fourth set. The first two were like those nightmares where you can't wake up. At least they were over fast. You'll face that fucker in the final, probably. He is good, I agree. He's going all the way this time. I will play him there. If your nephew would like a ticket, please tell him I'll be happy yeah. to... Okay. Thanks. Any advice? For you? As you say, I'm not over the finishing line yet. I don't think you have anything to worry about. Woo! Wow! What do you know? Yes, what do you know? The old dog! Yes. Ugh. Ha <laughs> ah. Thank you for what you said out there. Of course. You memorized that? No. Because it was eloquent. I mean, your English has improved a lot in a short time. Well. And hey, this is the last one, okay? Don't worry. The last one what? I'm announcing I'm retiring at the end of the season. Oh. Tomorrow we'll do a press conference, whole bit. I see. You know, it feels right. I'd rather go out like this. You know, I'm not operating under any illusions here. I don't think this is, you know, the beginning of a second act or anything. Yes, it fine. Just, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. I've always I thought, you know, I don't know, maybe go around one more time. But it has to be the right way. You know, the last thing you want is somebody seem desperate or pathetic, you know, crap out in the first round. Or worse, the second you pull some kid in the first who's like nervous and starstruck and greets, you take him down easy, they get your clock cleaned by some cold eyed Russian or Swede, never broke the top 10, but a veteran makes a fucking career getting into the third round of every fucking third of the enters, right? It's not about let me stand in the way of his 24 grand he needs it to pay his coach, his trainer, his nutritionist, brother who carries the rack. Oh, come on. Well, look at me. Well, I'm keyed up. <laughs> Can you blame me? Anyway, hey, you played a good match. Fuck you. What? You think you won this? Yeah, I do. They call it break point in the fourth? It was in. It was not in. The linesman called it out. And he was overruled half a second later correctly because it was a shit brain call from the far end of the court. My grandmother was closer to the ball and she's in Phoenix and she's been dead for six years. Oh, <laughs> oh now you're being ridiculous. And the guys are drunk. Uh, I think you protest so much. Don't get lippy with me and it's protest too much. If you can't handle the loss, Get off the fucking circuit! No, you get off the circuit! You are old man! I am getting off! I just told you! Good! Yeah! <laughs> I did you a favor. You forgot what losing feels like. I reminded you. Also, your draw was ridiculous. Fuck off. Admit that, at least. It was the joke of the tournament. For the last two weeks, you could not have gotten a sillier bunch of babies to play. First round, a qualifier ranked 205. Second round, American teenager with drug problem. He didn't have a drug problem. He was arrested in Florida last summer. Yeah, but he's been clean for months. Oh, his agent says, I doubt very much, but never mind. Round three, your opponent defaulted in the second set, twisted ankle. Because I made him run down that screaming backhand volley shot of the tournament. You only play two sets. That is the fact. Fourth round, another old man like you, only not even in shape. Quarters, clay court specialist. Shouldn't be here at all. Semis, he's playing injured all season, and he had a terrible draw. Five sets all the way, so he meets you tired. Finals, me. Your first real opponent. And I won. No, I lost. <laughs> Bad calls. Bad crowd. Assholes. They want to see Grandpapa win one last time. Bad draw. <laughs> bad weather. Bad everything. Bad all of it. They robbed me. Yep. Yep. I'll tell them that when I cash the check. Now oh, fuck everything! <laughs> My coach flies up here to see this! How is your coach? He is okay. Holding on, somehow. Girlfriend? We broke up. Nah. Uh. You ever buy any paintings? <laughs> no. Stupid idea. 
I don't want to be a pretentious art snob shit going to stupid galleries drinking wine. Museums are fucking boring. I'm going to buy horses. I want a horse farm in Virginia. This will be my hobby. Fuck paintings and dealers. Fuck you! After today, all I can say, I have no respect for you. That a boy. <laughs> Auburn's An Upset, directed by Michael Wilson, starring Stephen Boyer as Player One and David Harbour as Player Two. Thanks for talking with us. Director Michael Wilson and cast, Stephen Boyer and David Harbour. Any uh, tennis lovers on this stage? I love to watch tennis, but I'm terrible at it. I mean, I, I enjoy playing tennis, but I more often than not, either whiff or hit it completely out of the fence. I grew up playing tennis. Uh, I'm a Westchester boy, so that seems to be the sport up there. Um, uh, so I played tennis, but I got really frustrated because you know, I'm a big guy and I feel like I'm big and strong. And I played my little sister when she was like 12, I think, and I was like 19. And uh, you don't have to be strong to hit the ball like a ton. And she just destroyed me. And I think that was the end of my tennis playing days. <laughs> Being humiliated by my baby sister. You know, but a champion tennis player's performance requires intense preparation to deliver on command and in public. How is that like or unlike what an actor goes through. Oh, you know what's funny? Okay, I have a... Uh, I tore my Achilles tendon on stage a couple years ago during a performance of a play. And um, ever since you do that, you, you, you get into a club of actors. There are tons of actors who have torn their Achilles tendons. <laughs> like, it is a thing among actors. And I was trying to figure out why that is. And I think it's because we do have very committed movement <laughs> on stage. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like, we'll go do things very committedly, uh. but we don't stretch at all like athletes <laughs> or take care of ourselves yeah. or think in any way that we're doing something physical. Yeah, we totally abuse our bodies and then, you know. They just fall apart. <laughs> they fall apart. <laughs> but then we get up there and we want to make it very real. So we, we do these things that are incredibly dangerous. And I broke a bone in my finger on stage, finished the show, and then did the evening show, and then did the matinee the next day, and didn't get it x-rayed until two days later. Yeah. <laughs> there is some, this sense that I have camaraderie with athletes in that way of like just being busted up. But, but I also, you know, it is an event. It's a live event. I mean, that's one of the different things about doing theater than it is doing a TV or film. And, and more and more, I tend to think that it, it is about what's going on between the people on stage, but it also has to do with who's in the audience in that particular night. Like, it is an event that we all share in. So, like, when you go see a great performance and you're in the audience, you're allowed to take some credit for that performance being great. And, and in that way, you know, it is, it is an event like a tennis match. I mean, it is like a thing that happens. So that's, uh, yeah, I love that about theater. I think there's also something, like, they play two tour de force tennis players, right? And they're both tour de force actors. But you two are often in productions where you've got maybe, you know, a famous older actor who's a, a great diva who you, you may respect and you can learn so much from, but also there could be tension. They can be because maybe they're not remembering their lines quite as easily and readily. And so there's both this school of admiration and affection, but also it can get prickly mm -hmm, at times. Mm -hmm. Have any of you worked professionally with people you grew up idolizing and suddenly you're oh God, yeah. co-workers? Yeah. What's yeah. that like? I do a television show with the woman that I had a crush on when I was in high school. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, so, yeah, like, uh, I, and that happens over and over again. I remember the production of Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross that Pacino was in. Yeah, that, I was in now. Oh, yeah. Yes, of course you were. Uh, well, well, no, I, mean, I, 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 I couldn't pay attention to anybody but him either, so don't worry. Well, about. <laughs> but you remember the, the production also kept getting delayed and oh, the yeah. opening kept moving because oh, yeah. he was still working, you know, and he's working towards something. Yeah. And, you know, he had that, that scene with Cannavale, you know, the, the, the scene, 
and he had played Cannavale's role earlier in the film. And the kind of connection that Cannavale gave him when I went and saw the, that performance, it was just really beautiful. And it, it reminds me of this relationship a little bit in the play, because th there's actually a lot of connection and feelings going back and forth between these two men, even if they're, they're swiping and slapping at each other. And you all, I mean, I thought Yeah, it's sort of a passing of the yeah, torch, right? it is, like, it is, whether yeah. you like it or not. Yeah. And sometimes right. you don't, and sometimes you have to accept it. Yeah. There's a certain contempt for amateurs that's expressed in this play. <laughs> to your minds, what <laughs> defines a pro or an amateur? A amateur actually means for love of, right? Like amo, amas, amar, whatever. Like, so you. it does mean like they just do it for the love of, whereas professional means profare. I have no idea actually paid. what the Latin is. Professional, but professional, profare, profanum, fa. No, it means, <laughs> it means I do it because I get paid. Yeah. yeah. I'm a professional. So actually, I, I, uh, I don't have as much of a distinction. I've seen amateur productions with, just, with as much uh, investment, if not more, uh, just for the sheer love of doing something as I have professionals. Um, so I, I really don't make much of a distinction myself from that thing. I make distinctions between what I think is good and bad, but not, uh, not always does it line up with amateur and professional. But in the theater you often hear you're not professional, you know, spewed at someone as a big insult. That's true. Yeah. My acting teacher when I was in my first acting class in New York, Saturday mornings, started at 11 and whenever you'd come in at like 11.02, she was this amazing lady, Terry Hayden, and she'd like sit up front and she, you'd come in at like 11.02 and try to sneak in the back. She'd go, amateur! <laughs> so. <laughs> George Abbott used to make the actors not be able to rehearse that day. If they came in late, Elizabeth Ashley tells me a story. She came in late, she had to watch the understudy play her role the entire day. Oh, yeah. And you know what? She said wow. she's never been late to rehearsal since. <laughs> wow. Well, we should finish up soon, but I just want to say, if David Auburn were here, anything you'd want to say to him or ask him? How was my accent? Good. <laughs> That's Good. what I'd ask him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Why are you applauding that? <laughs> because we all thought he was so good. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. like he's insecure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we will end we'll on that it. congratulatory note. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for audio. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You've been listening to Playing on Air, theme and play music by Tom Cochan. Series sound design and recording by John Kilgore. For Playing On Air, our staff is associate producer Michelle O'Brien, literary manager Bonnie Antosh, development Gary Shiro, audio editing Julia Melfi, radio distribution by PRX Public Radio Exchange. This play was recorded live at the 52nd Street Project in New York City. Special thanks to them and to our stage manager, Megan Schwartz-Stickert, Alex Swan for event sound design and house sound mixing, Z Worthington on deck audio, and David Palmer on lights. We invite you to visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and head to our website at playingonair.org where you can hear our recently released short plays anytime. You can listen to lots more by subscribing to our podcast, Playing On Air. For Playing On Air, Great American Short Plays with Great American Actors, I'm your host, Claudia Catania. Thanks for listening. Thank you.